Good afternoon. Good afternoon and welcome to Transfiguration. We don't have any announcements to start this Mass, but I would like to ask you to please stand, introduce yourselves to one another, share any prayer requests you have. And now, please remain standing and join our youth choir in celebrating Mother's Day and the Ascension of the Lord as we all sing together.
I heard some confessions right before mass. I wanted to make sure that they were broadcast. So I, <laughs> I unplugged my microphone for safety purposes. <laughs> In the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. We have a lot to celebrate today. We have the Feast of the Ascension, we have, which was normally celebrated on Thursday, but because no Catholics went to Thursday, they moved it to Sunday. Uh, we also have Mother's Day, the Feast of Mothers, and we also have six young folks who are receiving communion legally for the very first time. We have a lot of things to celebrate this beautiful Saturday afternoon. So let us take a moment to see God's abundant mercy and love. <laughs> Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us of our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. O God, whose Son today ascended the heavens as the apostles looked on, grant, we pray, that in accordance with his promise, we may be worthy for him to live with us always on earth, and we with him in heaven, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. In the first book, Theophilus, I dealt with all that Jesus did and taught until the day he was taken up, after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. He presented himself alive to them by many proofs after he had suffered, appearing to them during 40 days 
and speaking about the kingdom of God. While meeting with them, he enjoined them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father about which you have heard me speak. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. When they had gathered together, they asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? He answered them, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons that the Father has established by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, throughout Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were looking on, he was lifted up, and a cloud took them from their sight. While they were looking intently at the sky as he was going, suddenly two men, dressed in white garments, stood beside them. They said, Men of Galilee, why are you standing there looking at the sky? This Jesus who has been taken up from you into heaven will return in the same way as you have seen him going into heaven. The word of the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, may the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation, resulting in knowledge of him. May the eyes of your hearts be enlightened, that you may know what is the hope that belongs to his call. What are the riches of glory in his inheritance among the holy ones? And what is the surpassing greatness of his power for us who believe in accord with the exercise of his great might which he worked in Christ, raising him from the dead and seating him at his right hand in the heavens? Far above every principality authority, power, and dominion, and every name that is named, not only in this age, but also 
and the one to come. And he put all things beneath his feet and gave him as head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of the one who fills all things in every way. The word of the Lord. Lord be with you. A reading from the conclusion of the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Go into the whole world and proclaim the gospel to every creature. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved. Whoever does not believe will be condemned. These signs will accompany those who believe in my name. They will drive out demons. They will speak new languages. They will pick up serpents with their hands, and if they drink any deadly thing, it will not harm them. They will lay hands on the sick, and they will recover. So then the Lord Jesus, after he spoke to them, was taken up into heaven and took his seat at the right hand of God. But they went forth and preached everywhere while the Lord worked with them and confirm the word through accompanying signs. The gospel of the Lord. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. So as I said at the beginning of Mass, we have a lot going on today, lots of things to celebrate. The Feast of the Ascension, which is normally 40 days, right? So we hear it in today's got first or second reading. The 40 days post uh the resurrection Easter story, and then next week after 50 days, we celebrate the feast of Pentecost, right? So normally you would celebrate on Thursday, 40 days. We're celebrating that on the 42nd day, and then next Sunday is the feast of Pentecost at 50 days. So be a quiz next week to make sure you understood this this week, okay? And so the Feast of the Ascension is about the bodily resurrection, which is what we believe, right? We believe that even though we die and our bodies are either cremated or, or entombed or, or buried, that eventually there's going to be a resurrection in the last day. And Jesus models that for us today in the Feast of the Ascension, that he showed that he is bodily risen. And then I messed up this past Thursday at Daily Mass, and I said, oh, we're celebrating the Feast of the Assumption, it's, I told you, when you get old like me, it's, it's, it's downhill from there. So, Jesus ascended, so Jesus ascended on his own, and the difference is that Mary was assumed, meaning that she needed a little help. So it's the basic, the basic way to understand the difference between the assumption and the ascension. So today we celebrate the feast of the ascension of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the giftedness that is to us the giftedness of God's modeling how we're called to live 
even to his very resurrection. We also have Mother's Day. And mothers, I think, um, and I'll say, I've said this before almost every year, I think, that we have Mother's Day in May, Father's Day in June. Um, mothers are treated pretty well on Mother's Day. Now, I didn't say that was true for every other day of the year, but on Mother's Day, they typically are treated pretty well, assuming that everyone's going to have um, breakfast and all the mothers have breakfast in bed tomorrow and <laughs> treated to a nice dinner tonight, more than the normal IHOP experience or something souped up today or brunch tomorrow. I've always said this, all, this is always the highest attendance weekend before the summer hits because mothers say, please, just go to church with me and I'll take you out for dinner afterwards. So um, this is our highest attendance weekend before the summer drop, uh, sadly. But we also have six young kids who are celebrating their first communion and this opportunity to receive Christ for the very first time. Have a question? How are you? You ready? You ready to go? I got a little few more things to say before we get moving, so <laughs> but I'll let you have some questions in a minute. So, as I said, mothers are often uh, treated very well on Mother's Day, but I also um, am very thankful. I um, even the mothers who have gone before us in in death have still have a profound effect. I talk to my mom and dad on a regular basis, and she's my mother still telling you how to do things to the very day. And she's been dead for, for years. Um, she's still t telling me how to drive. Um, my mom was not a good driver, by the way. Uh, but she's still telling me how to drive. This weekend, as we look at all the celebrations that we have as the Feast of the Ascension, Mother's Day, it's an opportunity to reflect on our relationship with one another our relationship with God in the Feast of the Ascension, our feast with our mothers who perhaps, uh, as we're young, we think they're the worst, sometimes the worst people that God have created. And at times, um, we grow up and we realize that perhaps our mothers who were, we thought were so difficult or, or strict, whatever, realize that perhaps they were actually good moms. Uh, sometimes that takes a lifetime to figure out uh, the giftedness that they are to us. And at times we realize that sometimes mothers aren't always the best people that God ever put into our lives. Uh, not every mother is perfect. And I said that the same thing on Father's Day. Not every father is perfect. Um, one of the things to remember on Mother's Day is if that's the case in your life, to forgive your mom uh, and reconcile with that, even if she has long passed, to realize that Sometimes we carry things um, forever, um, and sometimes the weight of those carrying of those things in life get to be the point where we can't carry it well anymore, and we sometimes carry those things for a whole lifetime to realize that perhaps we need to reconcile, we need to forgive, we need to uh, seek reconciliation, even if they have if mom has since passed. Um, but that relationship, that modeling of what Christ gave us in the ascension is a wonderful model for us to follow in our lives. Not that we're called to die today and rise to new life, but the life that God has given us in its fullness is absolutely amazing. We are in the midst of things blossoming and coming out and the pollen started to kind of die down a little bit and something else will bloom soon. But there's a beauty in God's creation and God's way of kind of putting life, um, setting it forth. And I sometimes think we don't take advantage of that reflection enough. Life is precious. Every day, life is precious. As I see these young kids, I re remember back to my first communion and those moments of receiving Christ for the very first time and wearing a suit that probably didn't fit me and it was I probably wore it once and that's why I became a priest so I didn't have to wear suits anymore and those moments are profoundly part of who I am 
not just because I'm a priest, but because of what God is doing in the moments of my life through the sacraments in the church, through baptism and Eucharist and confirmation, reconciliation, sacraments of marriage and vocation of the priesthood, those opportunities for us, for God to touch our lives um, in so special ways, such, such special ways to remind us of his abiding presence in our life. And so for the six of you, and all those people that are sitting around, most of them also remember even for some of them, it's been like, they're older. I didn't say old, I said older. That it's been a long time since they remember their first communion. They still remember it. And those opportunities I hope that you will have will be the same for you to remember this gift that God gives us. And this is not just about the first communion, right? We're not talking about the first and last, but the first of many opportunities to receive the Eucharist in the very body and blood of Jesus Christ. So today, you gather together, and why did God do this for you? Anyone know? Why did God, not just for you, because it's special today for you, why did God do this for us? And no help for the parents, because you might give them the wrong answer. So, <laughs> why did God do this for us. The reason he did it for us is because he loves us. I think at times we can underestimate that love. Oftentimes because it's just un it's unimaginable the amount of love that God has for us. And he loves you. He loves you when you don't do something well. He loves you when you're doing things well. He loves you when you're having a bad day. He loves you when you're having a great day. He loves you perhaps when you don't obey your parents, which may be every day. He loves you. And that love is poured into your life every single day. And if you ever remember anything, Remember that he loves you. Even at times when we don't feel love from other people, even at times when we feel alone or abandoned, God loves us in ways that are just so amazingly awesome. No matter what we do, he is constantly in love with us. And I think that's cool. I think it's amazing, and I think we don't think about that enough. Whether it be in the second grade, or some people who don't even remember what happened in the second grade. That God loves us so much that we can't even understand it. It's one of the mysteries of life. As next week we'll celebrate the Feast of Pentecost, the gift of the Holy Spirit to us, he never wanted to be us alone, so he went back to heaven, right, bodily and in bodily form. But then he said, I can't leave you alone. And so he sent us the Holy Spirit, right? And that love that is just constantly given to us. And that's what we receive here. That's what all of us have the opportunity to receive every day, not just on Mother's Day, but every day. Not just in the Feast of the Ascension, but every day to come forward to this altar and say, and hear the words, the body of Christ, and we respond with, we respond with, for everybody, amen. and we, we hear the blood of Christ, and we respond, amen, amen which means I, I believe in what was just said. I believe that that minister just said, this is the body of Christ, this is the blood of Christ, and I believe that God did that not just for anyone, but for me. He came to give his very life for me. And he did so out of love for me. Not because I'm the center of the world, not because I'm the most important thing ever, 
but because he loves me. Not any more than he loves you, or you, or you. Because that love is not depletable. It's not like he, it's not like Jesus is like driving around in his car and he goes, oh my God, I'm empty. I'm almost out of love. That's not how it works. You've got to stop by the gas station and fill up. That's not how it works. It's that he is love. And he decides and wants to share that love with us all. And so us as kids who celebrate our mothers, alive or gone, that we share that love that God gives to us with them. I didn't always like my mom because my mom wasn't always doing what I wanted her to do. She made me clean my room. She made me pick up my clothes. She made me put the dishes in the dishwasher. Yes, we had a dishwasher until I got older than it was. We had a dishwasher, but it was left and right hand. It was the dishwasher. It had two cycles, left and right. But she made me do all these things. I didn't realize it until later that my mom did it because she loved me. Not because she wanted to be the mean mom, but because she loved me. And she wanted to teach me how to be responsible to take care of myself. So even at times when mom drives you crazy, you say, I love you, mom. And so one of the things I want you, the six of you to do today before you go to bed tonight, I know there's going to be, where are you going for, is there a party afterwards? Where are you going? Your house. Address? <laughs> what are you having? Italian. Are you cooking or are you carabas? Gator. Huh? I know there's going to be a party for all of you after dinner or out somewhere at your favorite place or whatever. But before you go to bed tonight, before you go to sleep, I want you to sit down with your parents and I want you to thank them that they gave you the gift of faith. Because that gift of faith they have shared with you can carry you through everything and it can never be taken away from you. And they decided to share that gift with you. Even at times when you drive them crazy, they said, we need to give our children the gift of faith. You need it. It's a tremendous gift to receive and it's passed down just like I just said generation to generation to generation, and not by words spoken, most importantly, by actions lived. That parents, you're bringing your children to Mass every week, that this isn't a one-time-off thing, that this is important, not just day, but every single week, even on vacation, even when you're at Disney, even when it's not convenient, you're going to church because it's that important to show, not by words, but by actions and decisions made to pass on that gift to faith. So don't forget, if I'm gonna ask your parents next week when I see them, if they didn't, you didn't do this, you gotta come and see me. Got it? Got it? All right. Please, all of us, as we celebrate Mother's Day, should take the opportunity to thank those that have given us the gift of life. If it wasn't the best experience growing up, reconcile. Put it in its rightful place in the past. We have the gift of life this afternoon, or this morning, excuse me, I have a funeral for a 20-year-old young man. When I bury old people, it's, it's expected. 
You know, I did have one lady who was 102 and her 80-year-old child goes, it was such a surprise. <laughs> I'm like, you're not that far. <laughs> you're 80, you should not be surprised if it happens to you. But when there's a 20-year-old kid, life is a gift. No matter what we go through in our lives, and sometimes we think we have the worst week or the worst life or the worst week or the, or the worst day or whatever, think about the gift that life is. Even when we're sick or struggling or dealing with illness or dealing with spouse or a child or a parent or whatever it might be, Consider and remind yourself and mine of the gift of life. Whether it's one more day, one more week, one more month, one more year, whatever opportunity we have to live that day in God's love is a gift. And we should take advantage of it. And we should live it to the fullest. I can't stress that enough. I live a life that is bad news. No one comes to me and says, Father, guess what? I have the winning lottery ticket and you're getting half. Do you want to split it like this? No, don't touch it. No one does that or has done it yet. If you have it, please call me. I'll be happy to receive. <laughs> Most of my life is bad news. It's someone coming with illness, death, loss, struggle. Every day. And yet we need to live in the light and life of Christ. Even if we struggle with those very difficulties that I just mentioned, every day should be lived in the light and life of Christ. Every moment, every opportunity, every situation, we should live in Christ and appreciate the love that he has offered and offers and will offer to us. This is a great celebration for these kids, a great opportunity for them to come forward and say, I believe, amen, to what God has given to me. Not because necessarily you deserve it, but because he loves me. And even at times when I didn't like my mom, because what she made me do, I still love my mom. Because my mom still loved me. And I'm thankful for the gift of my faith that my parents passed on to me, mainly my mom, for the gift of what God has given to me in my life every day, even in the midst of it being at times dark and difficult. Because every time I come to this altar, and every time I hear his word, he speaks. And every time I come to the altar, I can receive his very body and blood. And I know that he gave, he's done so and does so out of his love for me. And as a priest, as I share that gift of the Eucharist with you all, I'm strengthened in the moment that God said, I want you to do that for them. I want you to share my gift of my body and blood with them. I want you to show my love to them. That's my prayer for all of us today as we celebrate all these themes. The feast of the ascension, the bodily resurrection of the Lord, the gift and opportunity to receive the Eucharist for the very first time, and for us to appreciate those who give us the gift of life. 
and relish and bathe in the love that God has for us. All right, any questions? No questions? Anybody any questions? No? You good to go? No questions? Gabriella, no? Danielle? Ian? You good to go? I'm not answering questions later, so you got your chance now. <laughs> I got dinner plans. All right. Let us rise and profess our faith. I I look forward to the life of the world to come. Let us offer our prayers to God, our Heavenly Father. That the Holy Church will continue to bear witness to the gospel with grace and courage. In the ascended Christ, we pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. That our parish community may be inspired by the joy and hope of Christ's ascension into heaven. In the ascended Christ, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That all Christians will turn to God for strength, remembering that Jesus is always at their side. In the ascended Christ, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That the Spirit of God will dwell in us and bind us together in Christ's name. In the ascended Christ, we pray. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. For all who are gathered here, may we be strengthened by the Eucharist to follow Christ's call in our lives. In the ascended Christ, we pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For all mothers and women of the parish, may the Lord multiply their joys and ease the burdens of their sorrows. In the ascended Christ, we pray, Lord, hear our prayer. prayer. That the sick, especially Father Fernando, will be strengthened by God's abundant mercy. In the ascended Christ, we pray, Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For all mothers for whom this Mass is offered, in the ascended Christ, we pray, Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer that those who have died will ascend to glory with Christ our Savior, especially Javier Mina, Wendy Shinar, and Blanche Nanny. In the ascent Christ, we pray, Lord, hear our prayer. And for your own intentions and those of your brothers and sisters in Christ with whom we shared earlier. Heavenly Father, we turn to you in our need. Strengthen our faith. May our hearts truly be open to the love that you have for us, that you pour into our hearts, for the giftedness of so many people who have touched our lives. We ask these prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen.
sisters and brothers, my sacrifice and yours be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Bless your name. For our good and good of all. O God, whose only begotten Son, our High Priest, is seated ever living at your right hand to intercede for us, grant that we may approach with confidence the throne of grace, and there obtain your mercy through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for the Lord Jesus Christ, the King of glory, conqueror of sin and death, 
ascended to the highest heavens as the angels gazed in wonder, mediator between God and humanity, judge of the world and Lord of hosts. He ascended not to distance himself from our lowly state, but that we, his members, might be confident of following where he, our head and founder, has gone before. Therefore, come with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise. Even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Fount of all holiness, make holy therefore these gifts, we pray. By sending your spirit upon them like the dew fall, that they become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, took bread, and giving thanks, spoke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take all of and eat it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood, the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, Gregory, John, our Archbishop, his assistant bishops, the clergy, religious, and all your people. Remember also our sisters and brothers who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, St. Joseph, her spouse, the blessed apostles, all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, that we may merit to be co heirs to eternal life and praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. pray as our Savior has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we will always be free from sin, safe from all distress, and we wait the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Spirit, let us offer each other a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, hold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Will you please be seated and remain seated until our first communicants receive the Holy Eucharist? Thank you.
May the gifts we have received from your altar, Lord, kindle in our hearts a longing for the heavenly homeland and cause us to press forward, following in the Savior's footsteps to the place where, for our sake, he entered before us, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. A few announcements. Uh, next, next Saturday, a week from today, on Senior Pat's 50th. He's old. I remember on my 30th anniversary, or 30th birthday, excuse me, um, I had shared with him, I thought something that was private, um, it had, was not, uh, that I was not doing very well as I moved from 29 to 30, and so then he took advantage of that. <laughs> so we'll see what happens next week. Uh, mass, he'll be celebrating the 5 p.m. Mass a week from today, and then the reception will follow in the so, uh, social hall. Please join us for the crowning of Mary, Monday, May 13th at 6 p.m. Ladies Auxiliary will be collecting used books uh, May 18th, 19th, and the 25th and 26th. In the narthex, there are angel blankets for parents who have lost a child. Our quilters have handmade these blankets to show love and support for families. If you have not yet made a gift to the 2024 Archbishop's Annual Appeal, I ask that you please do so. There's cards, pledge cards in the narthex where you can easily donate online through our webpage or using your envelopes in your packet. Please prayerfully consider how you can do Christ's work and spread his love by supporting beyond our parish boundaries. There's hospitality upstairs following, and there's six, or excuse me, five places to go for hospitality following the Mass. There's also hospitality upstairs in the social hall, so one family's having Italian. I didn't get the rest. I would assume the Brazilian family's having a meat feast. No? Don't tell me you're vegetarian, because that's illegal <laughs> in Brazil, right? Mistress of Caring. Please share our Lord with those that are not able to be with us this day, that he their healing and peace. Thank you. Would all mothers, grandmothers, aunts, and those who are motherly to so many people, please come forward for your blessing. Come forward for the blessing. And you're going you're gonna to face out from the altar to the con what's left of the congregation. Let's extend our hands in blessing over these women. Heavenly Father, we ask you to pour your abundant blessings on these women who have answered the call in their lives to be mother, aunt, grandmother, and so many women who are motherly and caring to those entrusted to them. Give them patience and understanding. Pour your love into their hearts so that they may share that love with so many that they encounter. May they truly reflect your presence in the lives they live, the words that they speak, and the decisions that they make. Be merciful to them 
May they always strive to follow you, to reflect the love of Mary, who guides us in how to be true mother to so many. May they know your abiding love in so many ways and be that instrument of your peace in the world. We ask these, pr these prayers through Christ our Lord, Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We give you thanks. To those that receive their first reading, we offer you also blessings and congratulations. <laughs> Enjoy your celebration and don't forget your homework tonight. I told you one thing. Got it? Daniel, got it? Me to write it down for you on your forehead? <laughs> All right. The Lord be with you. Be May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Mass is ended. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord and each other. Thanks be to God. <laughs>